For many years, Mr. Congo and I worked as shippers. Even though it was snowing fiercely all day, we had to keep working. Mr. Congo was normally the driver, and I merely followed the car because he had been familiar and acquainted with the route for many years. The route was still rather long, and the weather was quite bad. So I suggested to Congo that we find a motel to rest, and then went the next day. But Congo was still extremely keen to keep up with the shipment. The snow was growing deeper, and it was growing darker. After driving for a while, we stopped to refuel the car. Mr. Congo forced me to change the driver, and I drove to let him rest. Hey, you drive. I'll take a nap. If anything, wake me up. I was a bit annoyed because he refused to stop to rest. Moreover, he forced me to be the driver. He smoked a cigarette and said that the section of the road was supposed to be frequented by wild animals, so we couldn't stop for long. After hearing this, I was also a little embarrassed, but at the same time, I still felt very sleepy. The road was quite deserted at the moment, the area was quite far from the residential area, so it was also gloomy. Then I realized I wanted to use the toilet, so I requested for him to pause for a moment. He accepted to stop the car, but he still did not forget to remind me to be careful and quickly get back into the car. You have to hurry up there, and be careful of the dangerous animals. It was freezing cold. I stepped out of the car and I went around to the back to go to the toilet. Suddenly I felt like someone was watching me from behind. I looked around but I couldn't see anything. In the car Mr. Congo still kept urging me to hurry up, so I didn't pay any attention and kept going. I admit, it was interesting to go to the toilet in the snow. Sometimes I thought my little boy had disappeared. After I finished, I pulled up my pants and got back into the car, but I still felt uncomfortable because I didn't get enough rest and had to keep going. Suddenly I noticed a tall figure standing next to the car. When I looked closely, I was extremely scared because it seemed like a big non-human creature. But what could it be? Was it a big bear? Congo was urging me in the car, but he didn't seem to see the figure. Suddenly the figure turned around. I was terrified. The figure looked like a monster with tall build, the head of a pig and sharp teeth. I was so frightened. I ran to the side of the car to find a way to climb into it. But at the same time, I saw another monster standing directly and looking at me. I felt regret when I didn't believe Congo. At the same time, my heart felt like jumping out of my chest. I was afraid the figure would pounce on me. At the moment, Mr. Congo seemed to have discovered something. He quickly backed up the car so that I could climb into the passenger seat. I was still scared and sweating excessively when I got into the car. Mr. Congo's expression was serious and silent. After I had calmed down, I asked Mr. Congo if he had seen the monster. Before I could finish my sentence, I noticed a large dark shadow in front of the car. At the end of the car's light, the pig-headed monster appeared again. The monster looked so ferocious. The monster was now standing right in front of our car. The monster howled a terrifying echo towards the front of the car, and I could clearly see the blue eyes. The eyes were emerged from the monster. Mr. Congo kept his spirits up and drove straight towards the monster. I really didn't dare to look at the scene anymore. I could only scream in fear. Strangely, under the light of the car lights, the monster was not standing there at all. Because I was shocked, I yelled loudly and Mr. Congo annoyed me and reminded me, Have you seen the place is filled with monsters and it almost chewed your head off? I didn't have any blood on my face at the same time since it was too frightening for me. It was the first time I'd witnessed such a horrific scene. So the car continued to run until it was almost morning. We didn't dare to stop. But we finally came to a halt. The station owner instructed us to go into the village. There would be food and a place to rest. Mr. Congo said that he would stay here to look after the cart and arrange a place to rest, and I should follow the old man in the village to get some food. 
Then, once we'd found a place to relax and finished packing, I immediately followed the old man to go into the village. I saw a lot of wild boars in the village, but strangely I could not see anyone except from the old man. Because I had a lot of curiosity, I asked the old man about the area. Maybe the villagers here knew about the monster. But the old man said that the area was very peaceful. There are no monsters here. This is the most peaceful place in the world, sir. According to the old man, I was not asking convenient questions anymore, so I actively changed the topic to talk about other things. While we were talking, I suddenly saw a familiar shadow appearing in the distance. It was yesterday's monster. The monster looked at me and opened the mouth. The monster's mouth was full of fangs and its eyes were terrifyingly blue. I suddenly turned to look at the pig in the barn. They were strangely similar. The monster may be related to the village. I felt the place and the old man were a bit weird. Therefore, I made an excuse that I wasn't feeling well and needed to rest. When I arrived at the place, I hadn't yet taken any breaks. Mr. Congo urged us to leave the village because he discovered that the people here had very strange expressions. Then we immediately moved to the car. At that moment, of course, there was a man. He had shady intentions towards our car. Suddenly I noticed a crowd of additional men surrounding us, and they were aggressive. Congo said, Whatever you need, we will provide. Please spare us. At the time, the old man who welcomed us completely changed his face and became sinister. He said that we had hit and killed a person in the village. He demanded compensation from us. I was extremely angry by this nonsense words, so I jumped out to solve it. But right after that, I got punched by one of them. At the time, a policeman appeared out of nowhere. He told the villagers to bring the victim out. Strangely, I saw that they were carrying a dead wild boar. We accidentally hit this wild boar last night. But why did they say we killed the people in the village? The policeman said that we must leave all our goods as compensation, and we must bury the dead pig in the area where we killed it. Therefore, we had to give in and watch them rob us from all our goods which were of great value to us. Then we quickly got into the car and left the village. It was a good thing that we kept our lives. We went back to the old road where Mr. Congo said he crashed the car into the wild boar. You go and bury the pig. They were not human. It is best to do what they say to be safe, said Congo. When I looked closely at the pig and recalled the monster's face, I had a little doubt about Mr. Congo's statement. Congo said, the villagers were these pigs. After listening to him, I couldn't believe it. I was surprised and I asked him if he was being neurotic. So he angrily tapped me on the head and told me to hurry up and get out of here. We're in a ghost land. I think the story is just a rumor, I don't know if it's true. Hurry up! Get in the car and I'll tell you more. When I was digging, I thought if there was such a scary land in this world. Could a wild boar turn into a human? Later, Mr. Congo told me that the legend of the area was about many terrifying things, like wild boars turning into people, and that he thought both of us were very lucky today. We were able to return safely home with our lives intact.